1984, my ex-husband, he came here first. I was in New York having the time of my life. <laughs> I was taking care of the Buffkins, I was going on Sankerton, and I did not want to come to Europe. So his authority here sent him to come and get me, bring me here. <laughs> so then I ended up visiting Bangladesh, but I was in Amsterdam for a while. And then what happened in Amsterdam is one day the police actually broke into the place with a crowbar. I was in the, in the there was a, like a basement, basement office. I was in there doing something in the office and I thought it was all a joke. I told them I didn't do anything, but it turned out they were looking for people like me. So the authority at that time had said that he would take care of my passport, but he didn't. And he didn't take care of his own either. So both of us ended up going to jail and then getting deported. Anyway, after a few months, I just came back. Because I didn't want to be in Europe, but of course, if you're married, you're obliged. I mean, I'm not going to say any names, but on the other side, they said, why don't you just break up this marriage and we'll find you another husband. And the person that said it, I looked at him like, <laughs> he goes, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so that's how it was in those days. People, they felt my service was valuable in, in New York, and they didn't want to let me go. And then when I got deported, they tried to keep me there. It was, anyway. The same people who arranged the marriages were willing to break it up. <laughs> they were sannyasis and brahmacharis. And, <laughs> so you can imagine, right? Anyway, so I ended up back here basically for a long time. I wasn't happy because I had been in a, a situation that I really liked. But at the same time, over time, you settle in, you start doing service. And as was the tendency of my previous husband, because he didn't like authorities. And so after a certain time, he rebelled against the authority here. And by that time, I, even though I, I hadn't really given my heart completely to being here, I wasn't ready to be uprooted again. So that, he ended up leaving, and I didn't go with him. So in 1999, so that, by the time he left, by that time it must have been 87, something like that. So in, 1999, he sent me divorce papers. <laughs> so in the meantime, I became involved in Radhagesha. I, I ran the kitchen for some time. I did deity worship. I was also supposed to be taking care of the ladies. <laughs> so we were, when we were young, we could do a lot, a lot. But at a certain point, uh, I realized I couldn't keep up that pace, so I just st stopped doing the big kitchen and I became more involved in daily worship. And then at some point uh, I ended up being involved in the boutique and then I went to Holland. I went to America for a while and I came back because I realized that although I didn't want to be in Europe, by the time I went back to my previous place so many things had changed that it wasn't home anymore. So then I had to come back. But then the college started in Radhagesh. And uh, that, that really did it for me. I really loved the college. And what I can see in retrospect, if I look back, that although I didn't want to be here because I was very attached to Radha Govinda in New York, and Radha Govinda are so tiny and sweet and adorable, and at the same time it took me a while to realize that Radha Govinda and Radha Gopina are the same. And I became more uh, settled and to the point where over the years I began to realize that if Radha Gopinath hadn't taken me out of New York, so many other changes went on in New York. I think you've probably heard something over the years. I mean, a huge thing happened in the last few years. And if I had stayed there, I don't know what would have happened. I would have been in a very difficult situation. But here in Maradesh, I've been here since, I would say, I think I would say overall 30 years, except the time that I went to America for nine months. And uh, I was in, in a Amsterdam for a couple of years, but for more than 30 years, Radha Gopinath have been arranging everything for me. They've taken such good care of me, and I know that, uh, and I've spoken about this with other devotees, that if you have a desire, you have to be careful what you desire, because I'm sure other devotees have mentioned this, Radha Gopinath will give it to you. Even the smallest things, it's almost embarrassing, but that's what he does. So I come to realize now that like Radha Gopinath 
are taking care of me and my desire is to live in Radhadesh and if they allow, I want to leave my body here in Radhadesh. I don't want to go to India, I don't want to go to anywhere except to stay here in the shelter of Radhadesh and the devotees here because it took me a long time to settle but I really feel the protection of the Lord and the Vaishnavas here. So, one time, Sir Hodeswami said that Radha Gopinath are very small, but they're very powerful. <laughs> and um, so I feel myself strongly connected to the Radha Dash, to the deities, to the devotees here. And then I, I became very settled. And at one point, uh, Tamal Krishnamaraj invited me to go to America. That was in, it's actually a year or two before he passed away. six months. I was in Hungary for Janmastami and he contacted me there and I told him I would think about it because I was still a little bit past it. That was in 2001. But then I wrote him in 2002 and early 2002 and I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to come. And he was very kind. He said, wherever you stay, Prabhupada will bless you. He was very, very kind. And then in March that year he left. Do you remember? That was a big tragedy, and um, that was also a, a very strong uh, turning point for me, because at that year, that's when the college came. So that kind of, I needed that kind of engagement, and that's one of the things that's wonderful about Radhadesh is that over the years, so many projects have developed, and uh, one of the other um, qualities of Radhadesh that I really, really I'm happy about it. It's a second generation. Yourself, others, kirtans are going on. So this makes me feel hopeful for the future of Maladesh, that there's a good number of second generation devotees who are like regularly and very loyally participating in the project. And I think also what's nice about Maladesh is that the second generation comes because if they want to, no one's pressuring them. They feel a little bit relaxed here. It's, it's unique about Radhadesh, right? Because uh, uh, when the college came, a lot of second generation devotees came. And as we've all figured out, the second generation does things in their own way. And I remember I, I was, while I was in the college, I was also teaching the Bhakti by Baba course. Am I speaking too long now? No, no, okay. it's perfect. And uh, there was this discussion about women that comes up regularly. So I broke the class into two groups, and the men had to talk about you know, how if they wanted their wives to be like very shy and chaste, and the women had to talk about what it means that, uh, how women should be very, um, keep a distance and be very um, submissive. And so we, then the groups came back together. It was very interesting to hear the responses. And one of the devotees said, it seems that between now and when the movement becomes fully developed, there has to be some kind of adjustment in how we practice. <coughs> If we insist that everybody follows perfectly, then we'll lose a lot of our second generation to our teeth, and we need them to carry on. So it's it's uh, interesting to me. I see the second generation boat is making progress. Like we just dropped everything. Many of my my generation just dropped everything and joined, which was very extreme. But we were extreme at that time. We were really searching. But when you see someone making steady progress. Just because you're born in the movement doesn't mean you don't have to make a decision that you want to be a devotee, right? Yeah. There has to come a point where you decide, this is what I want to commit my life to. So here in Radha we've got a number of devotees who who are very tested to Radha Gopinath, and they sing bhajans in the temple every evening, and they do the Radha mellows, and devotees from all over Europe and even all over the world have come to really relish the uh, darshan of Radha Gopinath. Maybe you heard about, did you hear about Sajja Shrestha, right? Sajja Shrestha, he used to be the Pajari here, head Pajari. And he wanted to make Radhadesh uh, yeah, famous. famous all over the world, and he actually succeeded. Yeah. Everywhere, I mean, you'll go to Vrindavan and see these huge posters, right? Huge uh, billboards of Radha Gopinath. Yeah. It was so beautiful. So I've seen, I've just seen over the years how Radha Gopinath gives shelter to so many different kinds of people, and how the management has always been able to engage so many different kinds of people in Madhagopinath's service. And 
I have faith that they will continue to do that as long as the devotees continue to worship them sincerely. And of course, we're always anxious about making the spiritual standards stronger. That's always something that that uh, anybody, management, any devotee, and anyone who's been around for years, I'm also having trouble myself with strong attendance in the program and like that. But um, I have a home. I have devotees who are supporting me, and so there's always the faith that Radha Gopinath and the devotees in Radhagesh don't have my best interests in mind. And uh, I'm very grateful. Wonderful.